All right, good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Bill with World Bible School, and welcome to Friday Morning Conversations. And I kind of took our advertisement uh, and put it in the background, just playing with some stuff. So anyway, good to see everybody. There's uh, uh, Anna, uh, Dr. Fay, uh, David Jacobs, our board member, and I know that they are both here in the, uh, working today. But anyway, good to see Robert Dungay, uh, and uh, good to have... Uh, uh, there's Kathy uh, uh, Poletti uh, with us this morning. Um, good to see everybody. Uh, a lot of people joining us already, so praise the Lord. Uh, good to have uh, my brother, my friend, professor of WBSU, Apostle Brian Christian, back with us this morning for part three of Sonship at its Best. How you doing, my brother? I am doing excellent, excellent. It's been a, a wonderful week of traveling from Minnesota to Washington State, and so we're almost almost there. Today we'll be there, so it's great to be able to take some time out and be together this morning. So is that Washington on the uh, West Coast? Yes, Washington. Okay. We'll be in Spokane area, yep. Wow, all right, cool. Uh, good to see Jennifer joining us this morning, uh, Apostle uh, uh, Chaplain Shane Gabbert joining us this morning, and others. So yeah, uh, it's uh, it's good uh, because um, you you tr that's what you all do. You get in your motorhome, you travel, um, you, you move your house from place to place. <laughs> that's right. Yep. So uh, yep. nothing affects us. No pandemics don't affect us. Uh, droughts don't affect us. Uh, tsunamis don't affect us. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Right on. And uh, I think the Apostle Paul must have had a motor home because he said some things like that, too. <laughs> well, I no, know. In no Acts, light affliction. Were, yeah, they were. Well, they were all in one accord in Acts, so at least they had a Honda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? We probably could just tell jokes all morning. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Hey, we're talking about sonship at its best, and uh, it is unfortunate that this is part three, the final of this series for now, uh, but uh, I want to tell everybody that, uh, and I want to post this link real quick again, uh, you can get Apostle Brian's uh, book uh, called um, uh, The Everlasting Gospel of Christ. It's available at Amazon, and uh I remember uh, last time I had to take the Amazon.com off and just put Amazon so that it would actually show the book. So anyway, there it is. And if that doesn't uh, come up and show your book, then I'll uh, I'll redo it when when we after we get started here. So anyway, we've been talking about there it is. We've been talking about sonship, and uh, we've discovered that it's not who we become, but who we were created as, and. Uh, again, I said this last time, but this sonship is experiencing the many, many, many membered body of one as the eternal uh, Christ. We are eternally connected to one another, and we're currently experiencing an on earth encounter as it is in heaven. Now, last last time, I think it was you alluded to that. What if we were in a dream state? And what we were seeing in this conscious realm, this awareness realm, was really just a part of that. I've also been saying something else also. I've been talking about how that uh, we, uh, when, when you think about looking into a mirror, you're not seeing you, but you're seeing the reflection of you. And so I've been talking about how that as spirit, we're looking into the earth awareness, this, this sensory realm, and we're seeing the reflection. And... And, and, you know, here's the thing. I, I've been, really been trying to hash this out within myself because spirit wouldn't see anything that is not truth. Uh, a spir right. spirit would see everything at, in its proper perspective. However, in this earthly realm, awareness, it can be almost like a dream state because you know what happens in a dream state? Oftentimes, dreams, dreams are weird. OK, they're just they're just not a true reflection of reality. And, you know, even the crazy nightmares and, and, and which which I don't have. But the, the point is, is that uh, I mean, I've had them, but I, but I, it's not my regular thing. Uh, but the, the point is, is that it's really not a true reflection of who we are as spirit. So uh, as we get going this morning, um, 
when we talk about the eternal Christ and, and what his life represents in the written text of scripture, and just before we read some uh, scripture, talk to us about a little more, take us deeper into this, this dream state or this spirit state, or what is that? Uh, how, how is the, what is the mechanics of that as spirit? And then how we're seeing that in this, this uh, earthly realm reflection. Well, I'm not sure exactly everything I said last week, so I might repeat myself a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> That's okay. um, but you know, even it's, it's, it's basic science actually, where, uh, you know, science believes that, um, uh, your mind takes the dream world and the awake world as a reality. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and so since we were not, um, formed handicapped in the image of God, I believe we were wired for that on purpose and uh, being mm -hmm. wired to take both sleep, sleep state and awake state as reality and also putting into account that uh, God made Adam go to sleep and uh, he brought forth Eve and the whole interaction with Eve, he was never reawakened. And so he was in, in the in the father's perspective he was living in reality though he was asleep mm -hmm. and we know we know in christ it says awake o sleeper <clears throat> which puts all the generations in in a a sense of sleep or slumber and um you know dreams to me uh i used to do a lot of interpretation of dreams i remember when there was a lot of teaching on how to interpret dreams and some of it good and some of it eh, kind of religious but uh, you know, I used to, I had, a, I have a gift of interpreting dreams. I haven't done it for a while, but you know, as, as, as I used to teach, uh, if you have a, if you have a dream interpreter in the house, everybody will start dreaming. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, we see that with Daniel and, and Joseph, as soon as, uh, as soon as he got in proximity, that's when it began to stir that up. But, but the, the point is, is in a dream world, you see symbolically. Uh, most times when you interpret a dream, it's a symbol, it's a type, uh, you know, uh, certain people in the dream represent uh, different uh, attitudes or belief systems within you. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, like for me, if, if I have a dream about <clears throat> my wife's in the dream, she usually represents something of the Holy Spirit, the Lord, mm -hmm. uh, something like that, because that's who she is uh, in my life consciously uh in, in our interaction right i see christ in her uh there could be somebody maybe if, if i was uh, not that i am at this point but in the past somebody that irritated me that i didn't like or didn't deem that they were you know uh in christ back in the day before i was deconstructed in this revelation yeah. um they would have represented an enemy <clears throat> they would have represented a deficiency and um and so just as dreams are symbolic when we're asleep, so our awake life carries the same symbolism. We, re, we are reflecting uh, in this dimension, angels, demons, however, however you want to put it. Uh, there's all kinds of outward reflections that many, many believers out there um, are experiencing. But unfortunately, they will take that uh, symbolism and that reflection uh, as their origin, as their life, and that's where they end up getting and becoming entangled with the cares of this life and uh, making their identity, uh, uh, you know, based in a physical, visible state, which is a reflective mirror realm. And it is there not to distort you. It is there to confront you uh, where you still need to be confronted in the belief systems internally where you have concluded in less than who you are, especially when you're dealing with uh, contradictions in life and these kinds of things. So if both dimensions, being awake and being asleep, carry the same symbolism, um, are we living in two different realities why we're awake and why we're asleep? I mean, if there's no such thing as time and time doesn't really exist, then where is the present? And if it isn't now, then why have we chosen this memory to be conscious of and uh, believe it is present? And, and so, you know, 
I looked at my wife the other day, we were driving down the road and it just kind of hit me as we were enjoying the scenery. And I just looked at her and it just sounded totally out there, but I looked at her and I said, remember, we agreed to watch each other's back and not get caught up in this life as though it's the real life. Don't be hypnotized by it, you know? And it was, it was, it was like I was having a memory of, of us in eternity already making a covenant to keep each other grounded in spiritual reality and not getting caught up with the things around us as our reality. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I don't want to be offensive because that can be offensive to people if it's not explained properly. I mean, when you tell somebody it's all in your mind, um, it's all in your yeah. head or it's, or it's just an illusion. Death is just an illusion. I got in trouble, uh, saying that on uh, uh, Don Keithley's group, uh, somebody on there said, death's not an illusion, it's really happening. And I said, well, there, it, yes it is. On one level, uh, one, one realm, one dimension of consciousness, it is happening. But on another yeah. level, uh, as spirit, uh, you're indestructible. You know, you can't, you can't enter death. You can only enter a symbolic death, which was you, saying yes to a human experience. I think Colossians 3 says, put your mind above where you died. So dying mm -hmm. was us overcoming or solidifying a completed work before time and coming into time and laying aside uh, the glory we knew consciously and, and uh, making ourselves of no reputation, taking on the form of the human experience. Yeah. <clears throat> the blindfold yeah. is what I call it, you know, and and, and so when we go to sleep, we don't know if we're really actually just dreaming. On one level, it's just a dream. You know, I had somebody say, well, you know, I dream of uh, things in my life, uh, normal things, just like I'm awake, I see them in my dream state. But then there's these other things that don't make any sense, like they're otherworldly. And I said, well, yeah, you're picking up on uh, an echo. I believe you're in an echo. I believe that when we go to sleep, we begin our night job. Um, we, we go into our nightlife, another dimension at one level in which we might be having this thought, wow, man, I had this weird dream that I was a human, you know, and, uh, you know, in that place, um, <clears throat> you know, it's going to bleed over, uh, you know, things that are otherworldly from that conscious uh, existence. Uh, and, and so on and so forth. And I think a lot of times deja vus are a convergence uh, of us in, in different dimensions and what's been agreed upon. Now, this is just simple, you know, quantum mechanics here. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, so if you don't understand quantum, uh, then some of this might not make sense to those that are that are listening. But and we might just sound like we did too much dope back in the 60s. Uh, but uh, <laughs> ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, um, it is a reality. And the more we understand that God is outside of time and space and that we are his offspring and that we are right, we are related to the father, we look like our daddy. Um, it's in that Absolutely. place that in order to really partner with divinity and spirit, we have to begin to see from a spiritual plane and not just from a finite human experience. And, uh, you know, but yet at the same time, the finite human experience is an enhancement to divinity once it is, uh, it becomes, uh, I call it the receiver mode, kind of like, uh, and I, I'm pretty sure you guys have done a lot of study on this, the masculinity and the femininity of God, mm -hmm. male and female. Mm -hmm. And while us in eternity carried a masculinity realm, we carried both, but the masculinity realm is what we're receiving of the father in the sonship realm, which is actually a receiver mode in our human finite experience. Uh, and the moment we receive the revelation of affirmation, we are built up and the river of who we are in the spirit can now begin to release out of us to where we take the receiving mode and we then begin to move into the giving mode. And so it's a constant inhale, exhale of spiritual reality. And the dream state is a big part of that. Um, I, I don't even want to say a dream is, is not true anymore. I think it's I think we dream on a parable level in our finite experience, and then there are more plain speech dimensions. 
uh, and they could go on forever uh, in, in their application. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, the thing is, is that sometimes people are not willing to look at quantum physics, or look at science, because they've been kind of that taboo uh, part of Christianity that nobody wanted to, to look at or embrace. But, but when, you, when you deal with people like um, um, uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, who's a, um, a, um, uh, he's a, a molecular biologist, uh, also, if you listen to him carefully, while he may never come right out and say it because of the vast crowd he deals with, I believe the guy is a believer in the Lord. And, and yes. you know, when he talks about that, you know, here's a guy who took a, a area of study, a discipline, but he now takes that and pulls science and spiritual or, or religion together because what we have called spirit and we've stuck to it, uh, the Chinese uh, or the Asian world might call chi, uh, where yeah. science calls energy, but really they're all the same because we're yes. talking about the inner life force. John 1, uh, I think verse 3 or 4, it says that the light of, of God is the life of man. The energy, man cannot survive without the energy force or the chi or the spirit of God being within him, even if he is not awakened to that reality uh, yet, still there is that aspect. And so, uh, you know, I think this this thing of quantum physics, I know that uh, there's a guy out there, I, I can't think of his name right now, Dr. Steve. Um, um, yeah, I got it right here. Uh, Dr. Steve, Stephen McVeigh uh, talks about quantum physics a lot in terms of spiritism or uh, uh, Christian Christianity. Uh, but but the, the fact is, is that oftentimes people are not willing to uh, think about the endless possibilities of God. Uh, we talked about on a show uh, several months back about the difference between our uh, natural imagination and our supernatural imagination. And supernatural imagination allows us to go out on the limb, even when the limb might feel at its weakest point, its breaking point, uh, as if it's not gonna support the things we're perceiving to be true. Yes. But as Dr. K. Fairchild uh, says, that the best fruit is always out there on the limb. And so if you wanna yes. get the best fruit, you gotta, you know, you're not taking a risk uh, because uh, the more mature you become in our in your awareness, the more uh, you are going to uh, uh, discover that what is true and what is not true comes quickly. You'll understand yes. this is truth. This is God. Now, uh, I, I know we want to get into John uh, eight thirteen um, uh, today. Uh, I, I want to set this up, if I may. Um, uh, and I mean this. We could continue on this line of, of, of conversation and be cool the rest of the broadcast but uh i think this really does apply in john 8 verse 13 the pharisees said uh to him you bear witness of yourself you bear your witness is not true or it could be uh, interpreted uh not valid as testimony so yes. first of all i think it's a bold statement to tell someone that they are not who they believe they are in the light of truth that means that if I'm saying something and someone says, I don't agree with that, you're not true. And I already had that conversation this morning with somebody on a post. And, and you know, the reality is, is you're not talking from my perspective. Yes. You're talking from your perspective. And so from your perspective, you judge me as not valid or, uh, or my, my testimony is not valid. But he goes on in verse 14, uh, and Jesus answered and said to them, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true, for I know where I came from and where I am going, but you do not know where I came from or where I'm going. So uh, talk to us about this setting, because I'm going to read this shortly from the Passion Translation, but uh, this is so powerful. Jesus is saying, look, uh, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. Okay, You may not understand it, but what I'm saying is true. So what's he talking about here? Well, you know, all of John chapter eight here um, is dealing with uh, now. I think it's amazing the setup here because right before this interaction comes, he's dealing with the woman caught in adultery. Okay, 
and he's stooping down, writing on the ground. He says, he that is without sin cast the first stone. So he's dealing with setting somebody free from a mistaken identity. So there's a demonstration here in which he's removing the handwriting that was against her, taking it out of the way, right? By writing on the ground, right? He's writing. Uh, and, I, you know, some people say he was writing down her sins. I don't believe that. Um, I believe he was he was writing he was writing down her identity. I believe he was writing down uh, mysteries that were right there on the ground, and and uh, and so then they come and they're talking about who he claims he is, right in the light of uh, the proof demonstrated. There's a proof already demonstrated here of who he is, and they're trying to debunk him. Now, <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, Jesus makes it clear that that his record being true is based on the reality from whence he came and where he goes. And he's talking an otherworldly posture, uh, a, a viewpoint, origin, and he's dealing with his origin here. And, um, and I love this because it, it, when you, when you skip down a little bit on here, um, it says, uh, in verse 23, you are from beneath, I am from above, you are of this world, I am not of this world. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of times we can take that as, well, uh, there, there, there's two different groups of people, but that's not what he's really talking about. He's talking about their mindset. It's ta he's talking about how they're blind to the truth uh, mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. of uh, you know, of identity, of sonship here. And, uh, and so... <clears throat> You know, when you look at Jesus and the Father are one, he says this in other places. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So in his human experience, he could not bear witness of himself uh, or defend right. himself unless he was gazing upon himself from another dimension as the Father. And, you know, and so, when, you know, it's you having an experience of you. And, uh, and so sonship to me isn't just me knowing I have a father, but it's also me gazing upon me from another dimension as the father in order to relinquish my right in my human finite experience as a son, relinquish my right to defend myself, thus entangling myself with the culture or the mindset uh, trying to entangle me. And I think a lot of times we do this. We want to defend our truths. And Jesus had this awesome posture. He was postured in a place from whence he came. He already knew where he was going because he was already there. Okay. Because he was outside of time and space. He was in a now embrace with the father, which was also his identity uh, in another dimension. And so, yes, there's the father, the son, the Holy Spirit, I, I, the, the triune God, but yet God is one. And there's that singularity. And so, uh, you know, if you, we can look at each other, uh, Bishop, and we could say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Mm -hmm. You know, now some might call that a bold, arrogant statement that Jesus was the only one allowed to say that. But no, he encouraged the, the reality that, um, you know, he, he never put himself above us. Uh, he, put, he put us all on the same playing field and he came as us and we are as him and so that's what he came to manifest here and so <clears throat> and when you look so he's talking in verse 15 he says you judge after the flesh i judge no man so again judging after the flesh was trying to discern by the physical realm the truth now the mm -hmm. truth can manifest in the physical realm because we know all creation is going to groan to manifest the sons of God. So we do know that the groaning we see around us or the contradictions is actually um, a veil that un behind that veil is sonship. It is the manifestation of our true identity. So everything groaning in your life becomes a diving board to, uh, to unveil that reality. So we know that it's not necessarily a negative realm, even though it's a reflective realm. But if you get stuck in this as your origin, then what's going to happen is, is you're going to struggle to see Christ in one another. 
-hmm. you're going to struggle to, uh, well, to see yourself. And, um, and then he says in verse 16, and yet if I judge, my judgment is true for I am not alone, but I am the father that sent me. So you can see this double reflection here where he's not just talking to a separate entity as God, but he and the father are reflecting one another. So when I look at, and I'll, I'll sum this up because I know there, you've got some things to interject here. When, when, uh, <clears throat> When, when I look at the third dimension, we have, we have reduced the third dimension to one dimension. The third dimension is not one dimension. It's, it's a three chord strand that is not broken, which means there are three chords wrapping together of three different versions of us that we have to agree in, in order to manifest a third dimension with dominion. Okay. And so you have God as spirit, you have you as spirit, speed of light, you have you as thought, and you have you meditating on a thought, which is a physical manifestation. You as thought is soul realm, and you meditating on a thought is the expression, <clears throat> which is slowed down to visibility, right? So speed of light, speed of thought, and form, speed of form, okay? You have all of those entwined that manifest this third dimension. But when we take it only as one dimension, we get entangled and we cannot operate on all three planes. In other words, we can't agree with ourselves, <laughs> you know, uh, let us make man or manifest man in our image. Let us manifest in human form. So we see the triune God manifest, but we also see the three chord, uh, the three chord uh, rope. What does it say? The, the three chord um that cannot be quickly broken. You know what I'm talking about. It's in Ecclesiastes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, where two or three are to, uh, what does it say? Where two or three are gathered, there am I, mm -hmm. right? There am I is the reflection in the natural of an I am in another dimension. So it's an echo. So here I, I'm in the am I, but there I'm in the I am. You see the, the and they must meet. So in, in Psalms 86, it says righteousness and peace have kissed. It says righteousness looks down, truth springs up from the earth. And it talks about glory dwelling in the land. In other words, us manifesting in our conscious awareness, uh, the witness of what we carry. And I believe that Jesus was so in tune with the father in that divine reflection of him watching himself having a human experience as a son that he was able to not only to discern what was going on in the mind and the heart of the woman caught in adultery, but he was able to emanate the very sound of his thought about himself into a place in which she became quantumly entangled, quantum entanglement, and was able to come into the very same uh, revelation of herself, just being in proximity to Jesus. Okay. So speed of light, speed of thought, and speed of reflection? Expression. Expression. Okay. Expressing the now, thought would be form, yes. Okay. And I, I asked because I'm putting that on um, uh, a Facebook post right now. Um, okay. Now, let me, let me just say this for, for those that may not understand, when you talk about the threefold cord that cannot be broken, you're looking at a, a scripture that is speaking the truth, but you're also looking at a metaphor. Uh, yes. You're looking at a supernatural reality. So in that threefold cord, speed of light, speed of thought, speed of expression, third dimension, second dimension, first dimension. So yes. the third dimension is you know, probably the most important in terms of that, why we look at so many things as Jesus is talking here, you know, the passion translation, he said, be, just because I am the one making these claims doesn't mean they're invalid for I absolutely know who I am, where I've come from and where I'm going. But the Pharisees, uh, but you Pharisees have no idea what I'm saying. Uh, that, that's pretty straightforward. Now, I've been using this, This uh, I want to go back to the this threefold core, but uh, I've been using this saying uh, a lot lately. Dr. K. Fairchild says, uh, where your focus goes, your energy flows. 
Yes. So what you focus on, that's where you, so for example, if you focus, if you're all your focus is, for example, you go to the doctor, the doctor says, I've got some bad news, you have cancer. So from that point on, all you do is focus on cancer. You call all your relatives, you tell them, I, and explicitly, I have cancer and the doctor says i have x amount of time to live and you focus on it you focus on it you focus on it and you're without realizing you're releasing energy those 50 trillion cells of energy in your body that you're releasing toward that so in essence what you focus on you also empower okay so what we do is we focus on this natural realm so much this this natural perception be it illusion or whatever we focus on it and we empower everything that we touch with our senses in this natural realm. But but if we go back to see, and this is where a lot of people have disconnected from truth, is that you know when we again when we talk about believers and non-believers, uh, we talk about the old covenant, new covenant. What I did in my course on the the, the, the theology of creation, which um, a chaplain Gang, Gang, Shane Gabbert just finished that course in our school. Um, I focus on before time began as what John says, yes. where Genesis says uh, in the beginning, uh, because in the beginning, something happened, but that beginning is a reflection or a picture of what happened prior to the beginning right. in eternity past. Yes. And so as I look at that, I see Genesis chapter one as uh, the explanation of what happened in eternity past. But what I see is, is that uh, we, we were there with God from before the foundation of the universe as spirit in him. He, when he looks into that mirror of the spirit, he sees us. It's a reflection, but, but we're not disconnected from the father. So that's number one that people fail to see is that we are no way ever have we been disconnected from exactly. father, son, and Holy spirit as one. And then yes. two, uh, we've never been disconnected from the origin, uh, 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 our origin as spirit, even before we became visible in this natural realm, or we had a visible manifestation, or let's say a visible um, expression or reflection. And so what people have done is we're so focused on the natural realm that we see the the threefold cord as not a threefold cord, but three separate things. But spirit's what I hope to be someday. And getting my mind right will never happen until I leave this world and get to heaven. But yep. I, but I do got this physical expression or this, uh, the, yeah, this reflection that I can count on. I can count on that because after all, I can touch it, see it, taste it, hear it, smell it. I yes. got it. It's there. It's real. And when we do that, then all we've done is validate that the natural is the most important and the natural is the truth of everything that we are and i think that's where jesus says you you judge according to the flesh i i judge no one or in other words i'm not judging anything by the flesh yes. everything i'm looking at is as spirit and so i i know there's a lot there that we're talking about this morning but but i don't want to take my energy or my my focus and release that uh to validate anything that is not of my true origin because let's face yes. it when Jesus resurrected from the dead, there's a couple of things that happened there. One, uh, the death consciousness of Adam was destroyed in mankind. It was never a reality. It was a believed reality. It was a believed exactly. truth that was not a real truth. Uh, that's, that's one thing that happened. The next thing that happened was Jesus showed us that you actually can live in and, and, and reflect or have an expression in this realm, but be both the combination of, of the threefold cord, spirit, and body for he was spirit he thought as god to show us he always did but to show us that we could but thirdly he was hungry they gave him fish and honey etc et so he had a full expression of the threefold cord in the natural realm the only thing that the final thing missing of the threefold cord is that when uh, in uh, acts 1 9 when he uh, what we call the ascension is really mistranslated. It's really not an ascension because all he did is, is the, the Greek says he, he, he maybe to some degree elevated from the ground uh, barely and then disappeared into the clouds. Now the clouds there was the Shekinah glory of the Old Testament. But 
also the clouds was the great cloud of witnesses as spirit. And so he literally manifested into every individual person as one. So there could now be a full three chord expression with yes. uh, uh, in us. So the fullness of God, not that wasn't ever in us, always has been, but now we have this picture in the New Testament of how that happens. And so now, whether you realize it or not, folks, you are a full expression of that threefold cord. And what does the scripture say about that threefold cord? It's a threefold cord that cannot be broken. Even if you believe it to be broken or you believe a part of it not to be real, hey, guess what? It's still real. It doesn't change truth. So uh, I, it, it, I think that's kind of where we're at here. Uh, Jesus is saying, I know where I came from. I, hey, I know I'm spirit. I manifested as visible and I know where I'm going. Where am I going? I'm going to disappear into the clouds. <laughs> I'm going to manifest into the great cloud of witnesses so that everybody can have a conscious awareness and awakening of who they really are in him. Is that kind of it? Oh, yeah. You know, um, as, you were, as you were talking, uh, Bishop, it reminded me of the reality of just like people that are only aware of, uh, you know, the physical realm where they've neglected spiritual origin, everything gets unbalanced. It's no longer a third cord that cannot be broken. We, people live the illusion of a broken life. Um, but so it is in the opposite with people that become uh, religiously zealous in despising their human experience and only want spirit. Um, and so what happens is, is when we when we think that our flesh is sinful, for instance, mm -hmm. in the way in which we've been taught, again, that doesn't mean we haven't all missed it or walked in a mistaken identity. I believe we were predestined to put on a blindfold to an extent to prove unconditional love in the contradictory realm. But yet yeah. at the same time, um, you know, uh, we also have to realize that when, when, uh, when we understand that all of it, body, soul, and spirit is spirit moving at different speeds mm. and gazing in upon itself from completely different angles. Um, and we can receive our origin as spirit and complete. We can now uh, allow that to permeate our belief system to bring forth the expression. And this is where we see in Genesis one, where it says the spirit hovered over the face in the deep. So the spirit slowed down to meditate and the expression was coming out. A face was manifesting. Okay, and God said, let there be light. Now, you can also reverse all of these because not only is it three different dimensions in, on this uh, plane uh, of consciousness, but it's also the same before time. So before time, I was an expression that wasn't physical, known as an intention of God or the fear of the Lord being the beginning of wisdom. Now, if we take the fear of the Lord wisdom and understanding and knowledge is actually versions of us and worlds lived out in that dimension what we'll find is is the fear of the lord always deals with intention uh jesus uh is is mentioned in in isaiah 11 the seven spirits of god and it says his delight was in the fear of the lord and he didn't judge by eyes or ears but in righteousness and so we're dealing with Knowing the intentions of the Father is the fear of the Lord. It's not about being afraid at all. Um, it's just simply a terminology of part of it is awe. It's an awareness of divinity. It's awareness and the wonder of God, but it's also to discern uh, true righteousness and uh, to discern origin and identity. And so we carried an expression before the beginning to manifest at the speed of light in the beginning to man becoming a living soul in, 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 an, in, in the, the garden. In other words, the mind being awakened there. So we can see, even though they might be in a different order, um, mm -hmm. you have the, the physical here uh, that leads to the, you know, the expression, to the thought, to the speed of light of spirit, all breaking out of itself. But you also have that in a different uh, form uh, as intention before the beginning, into the speed of light in the beginning, into expression uh, in a human experience. And so, you know, uh, we can't neglect any of it. 
And for me, uh, when I look at this, Jesus, he was able to have a level of, of saying my witness is true. Because in John 8, he, he says, um, though I bear record of myself, but in, in other places, he says, I don't bear record, but the, the father does. So he'll go exactly. back and forth and he's not contradicting himself. Uh, what's really amazing here is it says, um, uh, when you skip down, uh, uh, let me see here. Um, uh, verse 29, he that sent me is with me. The father has never left me alone for I always do those things that please him. Uh, that verse was a verse that uh, the father really just broke open to me in which I, that's all I want to do. But I had this mindset that, that I was taught that Jesus never, ever, he didn't sweat. He didn't have, uh, he didn't have BO. He, he just was this glistening, uh, perfect example that never had any weakness or problems because that's how he was presented in, in church, right? In, in Christianity. And so I'm trying to measure up what can, oh, how can I walk like Jesus? It's promised that I can do even do greater things. So how am I supposed to do that? Because I can see things in my life that are not pleasing to the father. And, um, and the father began to speak to me and he said, son, he said, Jesus's perfection was not based on uh, the absence of weakness. It was based on him only receiving how I saw him or only receiving his true origin as spirit. And that's what shifts us in our reactions here. And so we're going to react based on what we believe about ourselves. So if I believe I'm this worthless, pitiful, you know, uh, poor excuse for, for a human being, and all I'm focusing on is what I've done wrong, what I can't measure up in, I am now engulfed and entangled with the cares of this life and a mistaken identity, the very thing the Pharisees were trying to project. Now, the Pharisees here represent our own religious thinking. It's the law. It's whatever we put ourselves under in condemnation. You know, I was uh, taken in a vision uh, yesterday uh, as I was driving to the Mount of Transfiguration. And it was very much as uh, in, 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 in uh, Luke's account of uh, the Mount of Transfiguration. I want to say, I think it's right around Luke 9. And, uh, you know, because uh, each, each gospel kind of gives a different angle. But, you know, he's up there and, you know, he's, he's you know, glistening and, and uh, transfigured. And Moses and Elijah are there. And the voice came from heaven saying, this is my son, hear him. Now, I used to look at that as being one of the apostles back in the day. I'm up there with him, and, and the father's trying to say it's only about him, but not about the rest of us. So just do what he's doing. And I realized that that was a lie of separation. Everything that's pointing to Jesus is about you. And, um, and everything the father said to Jesus is, is him speaking to you. And so what I realized was when he said, this is my son, hear him, he was including everybody on the mount, which was really representative of all humanity. And what he was saying is, don't you know you're the son? Can you hear me? Can you hear your origin? And if you can, then everything you're about to face in your life that's a contradiction, because that's what Moses and Elijah were telling him on the mount, the things he was about to suffer. So that everything you're about to walk through is really transfiguration. There really is no suffering. This present suffering is nothing compared to the glory that shall be revealed. That it really is glory in a completely different view. And so Jesus was able to take everything they were saying that looked like bad news to the natural man, to the natural way of thinking, and was really transfiguration. He used it as a diving board to leap into a future glory of which he always was, but was already emanating at that moment. Now, when they came down from the mountain, it says they went into the valley of the demon possessed. I love that. They go in there. Now, back in the day, I would say, oh, Lord, I don't want to go down to the valley. Keep me on the mountaintop, you know? Yeah, yeah. Every time I'd hit a valley, I'd feel separated from God. And uh, and there I was with the demon possessed, you know? And But the demon possessed there, and it's, and it's, it's amazing how it's acted out because they didn't understand they were in the sun. 
when they came down from the mountain. It says they didn't understand these things, right? And when they come down from the mount, uh, immediately there's a confrontation with a man saying, hey, coming to Jesus, can you help my son? He's got a demon. You know, I bid your disciples to cast him out, but they couldn't. And Jesus is like, oh, faithless generation. So it's really not Jesus writing off his disciples. It's really not about, I need to, you know, this, this boy over here needs to be delivered. There's a tremendous analogy here of how the disciples could not receive that they were the son and to hear the voice of their true identity from their origin. They couldn't receive that. So they had to go back down to their valley belief system that was already there contending with their true origin and identity. And there needed to be an outward reflection through a natural situation that would mirror back to them what they believed about themselves, that they were a faithless generation and they really couldn't measure up to this Jesus in front of them, you see. And so it was really about the mind of Christ, the spirit mind, and the carnal mind, and the battle that we have uh, between the two. Uh, and, but later on, Peter brings up the transfiguration. I think it's in 1 Peter 1. Uh, and he talks about that this is a sure word of prophecy, that mm -hmm. holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And he's, he's now in, in t telling those that he's raising up, that he's fathering, these are the final words I want to leave with you. Let me tell you about the true meaning of the Mount, the Mount mm -hmm. of Transfiguration. And it was about a glory, an excellent glory coming from within the glory. It was a realm within a realm, a dimension within a dimension. It was you seeing you in another state. And it was you being able to receive you as the Father receives you as a living, moving prophecy and uh and so yes very very amazing amazing <laughs> now now here here's the thing i want to make i want to make a, a a huge statement and, and i i don't know your I, I think i know your perspective on this so this is mm -hmm. not a statement to be in opposition about anything but but i but i want to tell everybody uh, there there's some things going around in a lot of teachings today that says I am God. Now, I want to qual qualify that because to say I am God um, and to, to say to, th there's a couple of ways to look at that, to say that I am the creator. Yes, I have creative. Uh, I have creativeness within me. Yes, but I am the reflection of the creator, even though I never separated from the creator. But there's the creator and there's the creation. Now, that's just that's just practical um knowledge practical common sense but, yes. but here's here's what i would say david makes this crystal clear and i want to go back to john 8 here in a moment but david makes this crystal clear when he says what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visited him for you have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor of course angels is an improper translation it's just totally off uh the passion translation he actually uses the word elohim but when you go to the word elohim uh here, here's the thing about it um the the passion translation commentary says that this word for elohim in the, is the same hebrew word used for the creator god in genesis 1 1 now let me let me qualify this because in, in the Strong's Concordance, although James Strong's was 1,800 years, established 1,800 years after the Kohen Greek, I find sometimes his comments, and I teach my students about how to interpret the Strong's Concordance, because sometimes his comments is, are very religious, his, his analogies. Yeah. So you have to watch for the metaphors, the symbolisms, and things that, that, uh, that are used. Here's the possibility of this. So when we look at that, the first thing he says is God's in the ordinary sense. Now, it's not ordinary, but he also goes on to say that it's of the supreme God. Now, here's how here's how uh, Psalm eight, uh, four verse five, uh, eight verse five is interpreted. It would say that you are a little different and not a little lower, but a little different. Uh, uh, the, the Hebrew expression actually says you are gods or as gods, lowercase g. For me, that's not an offense. 
for me, that's not a problem. For me, that's an honor to know that I am like the, my creator. Uh, so you're talking about in the, uh, 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 Dr. Glenn Hartline was on my show last night, one of our professors, and he said that that word there a little lower uh, was actually in the smallest measurement possible, which we often refer to as a hair width difference because that's a super small measurement. And so the reality is, is that we're so slightly different than God that Father God creator does not view us as any different. Okay, I'm only viewing the difference uh, just to qualify this this relationship of creator creation. Even when Jesus, even when John says, as he is, so are you. Uh, I would say it this way, as he is, I am. Okay, now let me let me let me uh, bear that out, because as we've been reading in John 8 this morning, and uh, if you back up just before verse 13 and you go to verse 12, uh, in the, the Passion Translation, it says, then Jesus said, I am the light of, I, I am light. He didn't say I am the, but here he says, I am light to the world, and those who embrace me will experience yes. life-giving light, and they will never walk in darkness. So I do believe that it's important that you embrace, not Jesus per se, but you embrace the truth. OK, so when you embrace the truth, then here's what you see. These words, I am, actually should have all been capitalized. I am. And so as yes. he is, I am. So as my right. father is, it's like father, like son, as the right. as the father is, I am. And that's how a lot of times we see our father son relationships in this natural uh, awareness is that that the. the Man, he's a chip off the old block. He's just like his dad. I mean, we, we use all of those analogies without realizing that just as Father God, creator of all things, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, as one, I call him more so the fullness of God. Okay, the full expression of God. As he is, so am I. From the beginning of time, whatever that was, I'm not looking for the beginning of time, but whatever the period that was in eternity past, in a time before time, I was manifested as an expression of my father, just like the threefold cord has the speed of expression that is thought in this, this earthly realm. It's like, I'm getting it. And so why shun this, the, the two elements of the threefold cord that are absolutely necessary to cause the threefold cord that can never be broken, even if my perspective is skewed, Still, it's never broken. It's never strayed. And Jesus says, look, I am light to the world. Well, well, guess who you are as you embrace uh, truth and experience this life-giving life light and never, ever walk or encounter darkness. You are as he is. He is light to the world. You are light to the world uh, because you're talking about uh, the light that radiates from the same expression. Now, I'm not going to try to divide the sun and the moon. The moon has no natural light. It gets its light from the sun. And so everything that you see that shows light gets its light from the origin. <laughs> you get right. everything you express. So I've got to walk in light, the light of truth uh, so that I can encounter his I amness in everything yes. I say, everything I think, everything I do. You know, um, I totally agree with, 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 yeah, we're on the same page with that, uh, Bishop. Uh, I feel the, the exact same way. I, I know that some out there are, are speaking a level of truth of, you know, we're God, but there, it's either a blanket statement or it's in defense. Now, it, you never have to defend divinity. No. Divinity does not require defense. The moment I defend what I believe, I, I'm, I'm still trying to uh, believe what I defend. And so I don't yet believe it. I'm still insecure in my belief. And so I'm trying to claim something. Uh, you know, but you'll find that Jesus is on both sides of that. He said, you know, me and my father, one in the same spirit, but my father is greater than I human experience. And so we have our human experience, which is a, another version of God that is, yes, just a hair less, but it's dependent upon the reflection of the yes. father, you know, and, and so, um, so, you know, for me, you know, uh, being in God in singularity, we were all we were him in that sense and spirit mm -hmm. before time that began to bring an expression and look into 
another dimension and manifest as the sun or the spiritual Christ in heavenly places in which came forth a visible manifestation in our human experience. And so in John, in John chapter eight, um, you know, one of the things that, uh, that really caught my eye, this whole back and forth that, uh, that Jesus is having with the religious, which represents many a times how we walk through our own belief system. Uh, it says, uh, uh, verse, uh, verse 32, uh, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And it says, they answered him, we are Abraham's seed and we're never in bondage to any man. How do you say that you shall, that uh, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, verily I say unto you, whoever commits sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abides not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. For if the son shall therefore make you free, you shall be free indeed. And, um, you know, when I think about those, two, those, especially those two verses, verse 32 and 36, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Whom the son sets free is free indeed. Um, I always used to take that and, and preach on those with whatever scripture I was using. I would be using one out of this, a completely different book in the Bible. And you shall know the truth. And, 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 and there, there is validity to that. Don't get me wrong. But I really believe that in, in this chapter, he is isolating it down to more of the heart of the matter, where what truth are we to know? And it's the truth from whence we came. It's the truth of origin. It's the truth of you gazing into a human experience from another dimension, you seeing your sonship hidden in the father and you through the father's eyes, seeing your sonship in a human experience. And so don't, this is the one thing that I've learned, never isolate yourself uh, just as uh, in one space of you. Uh, I'll give you an example of a posture in which I, I and this might seem out there, uh, but uh, um, when I, when I have a ha having an encounter, I'm having an, it through my eyes, in my mind, but I, what I do is I then, while I'm having that encounter, I intentionally, now intention is good, I, being intentional doesn't mean I need to know a conclusion or I'm trying to seek a truth from fear or lack. I'm simply going to realize a different angle at the same time I'm having this mm -hmm. encounter in my mind or in a vision. So what I do is I then step behind myself to view myself having an experience. Now, as I do that, I become aware in that secondary version of myself of a completely different sphere of surroundings also around me, not just looking at the other version of me having an experience. And so then I step out to the sides and I literally just keep stepping out and out and out and out. And what I find is each time I step out, I step out into a completely different world. And I'm realizing that where I began in just a vision in my mind was a parable of the kingdom that was now leading me to a more plain speech of the intentions behind that parable. Because here's the thing, you can have parable encounters all day long, you can have cool visions and wow, I saw this and wow, that was cool. But uh, why did you have it? And where was it originating? Did you just have it? Or did you just remember what you've always had? Mm -hmm. And in that, are you able to continually gaze upon it from so many different angles and views that you now get the purpose of why you're remembering it in this particular environment and, and uh, sense of time. Uh, because that's where you can partner. Uh, that's where Jesus partnered. I only do what I see the Father doing. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And so Jesus was beside himself watching what he was doing from another dimension of intention that was now translating into the visible realm of uh, parables in which he was able to pull the plain speech of the father in that embrace and manifested and demonstrated as the supernatural. Yeah. Amen. And, and, and I, I want to just, 
Yeah, this this is wild because, uh, and I think the next time we do a series together like this, I think that, you know, we can even take this deeper. Um, you know, I, I've been thinking about, you know, Exodus 3.14, God said to Moses, I am who I am, uh, yes. reading from the New King James. He said, thus you shall say to all the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And so God is telling Moses, tell the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. In other words, uh, here's the creator creation expression, even though it may be a hair width difference, it may be slightly different, um, that still uh, we recognize who we are. Uh, we are children of our father and our father has created us very much like himself. Otherwise, we would not be able to express him. Now, think about that because I, and let's just kind of play with that. I am able to express him because of who I am in, uh, I, in the I am, the great I am. And so a lot of things can be done with this. I think next time we're on, we really do yes. got to carry this deeper. I know that you're on the road and are heading toward a destination, um, but so grateful to you, Apostle Brian, because this is such an important uh, area of teaching because a lot of people are, are really just beginning to tap into their true identity um, of origin, but it's so strange. Oftentimes, it will kind of be rejected or set aside or not focused on because it's like, eh, I don't really know about that. But I want to tell you, if you really want to encounter more peace than you've ever been aware of, uh, more rest than you've ever been aware of, uh, more joy than you've ever been aware of, more of a state of righteousness or a state of, of being right in, in all areas. If you really want to experience that, go ahead and step in. Go ahead and step yes. into this revelation of truth because that's where it'll take you to. If you're looking for less uh, uh, dealing with the mental anguish of the challenge of life, and more of living in the peace and rest, this is where you need to go. Uh, I want to tell everybody, you can go to uh, uh, YouTube and click on Brian Christian. Uh, just put in the search line, Brian Christian. You can pull up his YouTube channel. I believe you also have the Father of Glory uh, in yeah. YouTube. Yep, it's called Father, Father of Glory. Of Glory. Yep. Yes. Okay, Father of Glory. Uh, uh, just those words, Father of Glory. And you can bring that up and you can also... Uh, find uh, his YouTube channel there. And I would uh, suggest that you subscribe uh, so that you can get more of these teachings. Uh, he has, you have audio podcasts there. Is that correct? Yes. Podcasts also show up on there as well. Yes. And so it's very important that you, if you're really hungry for truth, continue pursuing this avenue of this threefold cord. This is so good because I used to teach them as separate also. Uh, spirit, soul, and body is separate. When when God didn't mess up at the beginning, he created us an entire being, even though there yes. were very levels, various levels of that awareness that we were not aware of or awakened to. And I agree. I love that. Adam went to sleep. God, God put him to sleep. Okay. Yes. You're out, dude. <laughs> God put him to sleep. And and the, the suitcase uh, woke up in Eve, the, the, the eyes of their understanding were enlightened and they knew their conscious awareness uh, awakened. But, uh, you know, God never told, God never discredited them. God never told them when they were any less than they had always been, even though their perception had changed. Get off of this uh, Adamic perception, folks. It's a, right. it's a believed lie and go back to origin. Consider the possibilities with your supernatural um, uh, imagination because yes. there's fruit out there and it's good. Oh, it's so good. So good. You know, I, uh, uh, in my life, I was, I, I, if you, if you get my book, the first chapter is on, uh, my own, some of my own journey. And I, I mm -hmm. could not stop thinking condemnation. I was such a self-sabotager, uh, you know, uh, just going from just relationship to relationship, loss, destruction. And I projected on everybody and everything else, devils, demons, uh, mm -hmm. other people, myself, God, I was always angry with God telling him to come down and duke it out. Like on that movie, Bruce Almighty, I was just, uh, I was a mess. And so, that whole setup to where I am now, it was this revelation uh, of origin. I realized that um, 
I'm not going to be able to understand God from a, a finite perspective. I'm going to need to be able to step outside of time and space in order to really grasp what, who the father is, what he's really doing, this partnership of spirit. And it is actually a lot easier than you think in the sense of it's very simple. It's just finding that simple posture and our minds are very complicated when, it, when, we're, when we're stuck in, uh, in, in, in a carnal mind. It, we're always trying to figure things out rather than transfigure them out. And so we simply have to um, uh, live between each thought. In fact, don't try to think. Uh, take no thought for your life. Instead, mm -hmm. bear witness to what the Father is doing in every situation that you once deemed not of him. And so I let go of anything being not of him. And I looked for everything that God made was good. And um, uh, I just began to use every contradiction in my life to deal with everything I'm not uh, as, a, as a blessing yeah. to manifest who I am. Because uh, you and I are, as spirit, we're indestructible. We can't be touched or tainted by this dimension. We can't be interrupted. We don't have a bad day. We don't have uh, uh, a bad feeling um, because, because we're in his divinity in that sense of spirit. But my human experience needs the reflection of the father as a son in order to bridge uh, that reality. And so, yes, uh, I'm really excited Bishop, uh, I can't wait. Uh, I can't wait to do our the the first uh, class there at the university. I'm really yeah. excited about that, and we're, I'm getting getting going on that this next week. And we're going to have a lot of upcoming events in uh, Spokane, Washington area. Uh, we've had to move a lot of things to homes because uh, uh, they're still not opening the state completely. Uh, but a lot of people are hungry, and they 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 want this. They want to gather, and so. Um, I'm, I'm just so looking forward to uh, seeing people come into this revelation of rest, yeah. peace, the adventure, you know, yeah. so amazing. Thank well, you for having you me. Stream. It's a pleasure. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, plus, you stream your events often. Yes, yes. We will be live on Facebook for, for those events as well. Okay, great. Uh, so let me say this in closing, uh, son, uh, seeing sonship through the perspective of the father and how we overcome struggles from that place is done through knowing who you are, no matter what pharisaical thoughts in your mind may be saying to you, because that's what the Pharisees were trying to do to Jesus in that, uh, that instance. Uh, so it comes from knowing your true identity, knowing who you yes. really are, what God says more than what your eyes see and your natural mind's trying to wrap around. Understand the Father. Thank yes. you, Apostle Brian. I so appreciate these three sessions. This is super powerful. Love oh, you, man. Thank you, sir. I love you too. It's awesome. It's wonderful. Hey, everybody. Have a great day. Click like and share. Let somebody else know this crazy stuff is out there and it'll actually <laughs> set you free it'll make you free indeed so uh let's let people know about it thank you everybody have a great day and we'll be seeing you soon See uh, this you is soon. our last broadcast for the week and uh, I don't think there'll be an impromptu broadcast over the weekend, but who knows? Uh, we'll see you next Tuesday at least as we talk about uh, back with our panel discussion on new realities of the Christ consciousness. We'll see you then. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.